Welcome to the Craft to Career Podcast with Elizabeth Chapel, where every week we dive into how you can turn your craft into a successful career. Get ready to have the career you've always dreamed of. Welcome to episode eight of the Craft to Career Show. I am Elizabeth Chapel of Quilters Candy, and I am the host of the show. I am excited to have Emmy of Emmy Genation on the podcast today. Emmy's going to talk a lot about Pinterest. She's sort of an expert in that area. That's how she has started and grown her entire business and has been super successful with it. She does not spend a ton of time on social media and talks about the difference, how Pinterest is not social media and what it really is. But before we get started, I want to share a review. This review is titled, What I Was Looking For. I am a huge crafter and always wanted to make my craft into my business. Starting a business is a risk and I do not want to go into it unprepared. I love how Elizabeth lays out must-dos and obstacle possibilities on the way to creating your own business in a craft arena. I am soaking in these podcasts to prepare myself for the dive of my life. This podcast is one of a kind in the industry. I absolutely love this review. I am so glad that this is helpful and I am so excited. There's no name attached to this, but whoever you are, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. I'm just really excited for you. And it is the dive of your life. There are some fun, exciting things ahead. And yes, some dips and dives, ups and downs, but you do not have to do it alone. And that's what this podcast is all about. And so with that said, let's get started and dive in. And let me introduce you to Emmy of Emmy Genation. One thing I want to add about this episode, I had a few technical difficulties. I apologize if the sound isn't the best. Emmy was so sweet to just roll with it when my first computer didn't work in my normal recording studio, and I went and hopped on my desktop. So bear with us as the sound quality might not be what it normally is, but what Emmy shares is worth it. So I really hope you enjoy this episode and that the sound quality doesn't get in the way of the awesome information. All right. Welcome. Today we have Emmy of Emmy Genation. Did I say that right? Yes. Perfect. (laughs) And I'm super excited to have her here. I just recently found out about Emmy and I'm intrigued because she does graphic design and she does a mentorship program that I learned about. I just joined her Pinterest course, which is like open right now. And she, I mean, her emails are written very well, which I want to chat with you about if you do your own copywriting or if you hire someone, but (laughs) yeah, they intrigued me. So I thought for sure I need to have Emmy on this podcast, have her share her story and share just, you know, to open your eyes to some possibilities of business ideas. So Emmy, do you want to tell us a bit about your story, what you do, how you got started? Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, and also I didn't know you were in the course. I'm so excited. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm actually from Mexico and I moved to the U S when I was 21 for college and I actually went to graphic design school. Um, so I do have a background in design and then I have one of those stories where, you know, you graduate, you go into the corporate world, you do the nine to five. I was a, art director in an advertising agency, which you would think I would design, but I wasn't. I was doing a bunch of commercials in LA and I just missed designing and being that kind of creative, more hands-on. Shooting commercials was fun. (laughs) I'm not going to lie, but I just really wanted to design again and to be creative and brand and, and all of that. And so I started freelancing on the side and I started by working with my aunts and friends and coworkers and, you know, charging like $300 for a website never do that. (laughs) Never. But you know, when you're starting out, it's just kind of figuring it out as you go. And, um, I guess at some point I was like, you know what, I, I don't want to do the nine to five anymore. Um, it's not my calling. It's not my passion. And so I started saving a lot of money so that I could quit. And once I felt secure, I quit my job and just freelanced full time. 
And um, obviously when you dive into this new world and you're on your own and it's kind of like Bambi trying to walk (laughs) and you're just kind of scrambling and falling. Um, I was not getting a lot of clients and I didn't know what to do. And I was again, craving that design, that creativity. And I always had this pull to just create. Um, So I started doing what I call passion projects, which is just designing fake clients. Um, Passion project sounds better than um, fake client work. So I had this idea to just create labels for soaps. Why? I don't know. I just was like, I want to design some labels for beautiful marbled soaps. And I did that. And it was my first ever passion project. Um, I designed it. I printed the labels. I bought the soaps. I did the whole thing. I photographed it. And then I had no website and I was like, where should I put this? And I was like, I guess I have a Pinterest account. So I ended up putting my work on Pinterest and I started to do that and repeat and fine tune and trying to figure it out while I was building a website. And then, um, three months later, after I posted that first passion project, I got an email from anthropology, um, which is a big client of mine. This was back in 2013, 14. So it's been a while and I still get projects for them, but it was a huge pinch me moment. I still remember that day, like that email, I had to go back and read to see if it was not spam. They were like, Hey, we found this soap label. (laughs) Um, is this yours? We're looking for someone with this style to help out with a couple of projects. And that's kind of how I got started. Um, I kept designing and I kept trying things, even though I had no clients. And then I found this, I guess, marketing um, venue with Pinterest. And I said, if anthropology found me on here, then I feel like there's more to be, you know, done with this platform. And so I just kind of dove into it. And, you know, years later, here I am. And I launched a course and I started mentorships. And, you know, it's funny to think back and 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 remember that it was all because of some soaps <laughs> is what I like to call it. Um, but that's kind of my uh, deal in a nutshell. <laughs> hey, I have so many questions. It's such yeah. a story. So to be sure, you didn't have any real product out there. You were just creating mock-ups and that's how anthropology found you. Yes. Correct. That is so cool. So that was your first time for like, okay, I'm really doing this. Let's just jump in. And yeah. And it was almost like battling imposter syndrome because, you know, this isn't a product that's in the world that I designed. It was literally, I went to Whole Foods and I bought the soaps and I printed them on my shitty printer. This was before I knew that people sold mock-ups and you could just, you know, use those on the computer. You didn't have to do everything, but there's something so pure about my first one being like, I cut label, I printed them, you know, but yeah, I mean, I had nothing, no real world experience. I mean, that is such a cool story. I love it. So then my questions, um, did, okay. When it comes to pricing, Mm -hmm. how, how, you're very confident. So my friend Sylvia is in your mentorship and that's how I heard about you. And I love, you know, she'll share your, not word for word, but you know, the advice that you give her. And I love that you encourage her to charge what she's worth. And even at the beginning of this, you said $300 for a website, nobody ever do this. So what, how do you approach that when there are people out there who offer that service for $300? Like, how do you encourage someone to be confident in charging what they're worth and how do they figure out what they're worth? You know? Yeah, that's such a big question because when you do first start out with any sort of business, you're so afraid of not getting a client or a customer that you just undercharge because of fear that you're not going to get anybody. Um, And I totally get that. Like I did that, but at the end of the day, you have to build a business that is going to provide the income that a nine to five is. And if you start so low, it will be harder to keep increasing and keep jumping. And so what I like to do is I like to do kind of a inventory of what it costs 
for you to live. Like how much is your rent or your mortgage? How much is your everything? Um, and kind of start dreaming about how many clients would it take for me to achieve this? And it's a lot about math. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's a lot about really like doing some math here and getting out a couple of numbers and just seeing what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's kind of how you start out just seeing if this is my business and this is going to be my income to live. What does that number look like? And it is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It is, it gets very uncomfortable. People are uncomfortable talking numbers, but you have to do this exercise. And I always say, if the number seems too high and you really just are not comfortable, follow your gut. Maybe you have a roommate or a spouse or a partner that takes half of your, um, like the, the, uh, bills and stuff, then maybe cut it in half and start there. So I always say, don't do the $300 thing. Mm -hmm value yourself and the lifestyle you want, but also always follow your gut. Like if yeah. you're not comfortable, it's going to show. And I think confidence is more important when you start than a big number and then you build from it. Yeah. And I've seen too, like when I have people come to me, there's always going to be someone who doesn't want to pay the full amount or who thinks it's too high and that's okay. Like that's not who your ideal customer is. Yeah. And I don't know, tell me your experience, but I found that generally the people who I like to work with are, are comfortable or willing to pay what my price point is, you know, I do you see truth in that. Yeah. Um, I think that the person that finds you and wants to work with you will make it work because it's kind of like, I always say, when you go get your hair done, you pay for what you get. Are you going to go to super cuts and, you know, cut some corners and then maybe, you know, not get the hair you wanted, or maybe even you kind of hate what they did, or do you want to pay that premium price? And we do this in our lives all the time. We choose what we pay a premium price for because we want that quality, you know, um, maybe you'll get the generic soy milk, <laughs> you know, just to save a couple of bucks and that's okay. That's your choice, but you won't compromise on a good haircut and a good hair color. Yeah. Same thing with any service. Um, so it's kind of like when your people find you, they want to invest because only you have that talent that they want. Only you can design that way. Only you create that product that they need. So yeah, it comes back a lot to building that confidence of like, they will come to me because I'm the only me. Yep. I love it. And do you think that, um, at first it's okay to charge a little less and, and then that'll help you build your confidence once you have clients, or do you say, just go all in and trust yourself from the get-go, you know? I think that that is a personal choice, um, per person, per designer, per business person, because I think that some people thrive on just being like, I have value and this is where I'm going and that's okay. But then someone with a different personality, like I'm such an introvert and I tend to take baby steps with things and test the water. And it's totally okay if you want to cut back a little bit and then slowly as your confidence, it's okay. Everybody has a different pace and there is no right or wrong way to do it. There is only your way. I like that. I'm definitely much more of an introvert too. And I can see mm -hmm. I'm much more like, let's build up some testimonials and then I'll, you know, yeah. this or that. So then I, I also want to chat with you about your, the words that you use, cause you're very good about that. So you have with the mentorship, like a coffee chat, right. Instead of like yeah. a call or like, you're just very good. And even, and your emails, like the captions, the title, it captures my attention. So do you do really? this on your own? Do you have training with this? Tell That's me. That's so funny. And thank you for saying that. I am so self-conscious about how I write. Um, all of the emails and all the newsletters, I just kind of sit down and write. I don't proofread. I don't do anything. Um, I do have to say that I worked with a copywriter for my new website. Um, and she kind of helped me a little bit and guide me uh, with some of the things. But um, I do my own emails. Uh, 
I don't know. It's, it's the way I talk. I mm-hmm. think that, and, and this is what I was talking to her about. Um, I was like, I just wanted to sound like me. And so she said, just talk it out, write it as you would say it. And then she just kind of fix and like, you know, it's like, I always say, speak it out. And that's how you talk. That's your tone. That's your voice. Don't pretend to be anybody else. Just be you. Even if it gets a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Do you like record yourself or do you just, do you literally say it or do you just type and think, is that how I would say it? I would, I I, I just like free flow type. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't, this is probably not the best way to do it. But when I sit down to write, you know, the monthly newsletter, I don't, think about what am I going to talk today? Or I have a guide of this is what the topic is. No, I literally sit and free flow, right? Whatever happens, happens. And then I go back once and I edit, you know, what I can and that's it. Okay. I love that. Well, then you've got a talent with that there. We're gonna oh, thank you. <laughs> be a copywriter as well on top of all the other things. But <laughs> So how did you decide to do the mentorship? I'm super intrigued. I, th- I think it's really cool. Like how did that come about? Um, this is probably the weirdest story, but when I came back from my maternity leave, um, I created a graphic for Instagram saying I'm coming back in a week or so, and I'm going to launch a course, get on the wait list. Um, I'm opening spots for branding, um, three spots open. And then the layout, (laughs) The layout of the design didn't look balanced enough. And I'm like, I need one more item. What can I add? (laughs) I know, I know, I know. And so I was like, mentorship spots open, three spots. And I didn't promote it. I didn't set out to do anything. And I didn't think that I was going to get anybody because I had been gone on maternity leave and, you know, the last couple of weeks for my pregnancy. So I'm like, nobody even remembers me, you know? (laughs) So I posted that and I started getting a lot of emails saying, how do I apply? And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I started, um, just researching and just thinking about what I would like to do, how I would like to do it. And I wrote this program on a piece of paper. And then I, you know, said, because like you, like, this is the first time I do this. So I'm going to like do a low, low price so that I can get those testimonials. Mm -hmm. And then I just picked four girls and it's been going great. But honestly, it was kind of a just go at it and not really structured at all. <laughs> I really like you. I think we're very similar that way. I'll put something out there. I'm like, okay, cool. So now I need to figure this out. How do I do Yeah. That? <laughs> that is awesome. So if you were to make a pie chart of like where you get income, where are the different places and how big of a piece of the pie are they? Mm-hmm. So I think the biggest would be the course. The course right now, or this is the second time I launch it. And every time I'm just blown away um, by the response. And then I think the second one would be um, client work, branding and all of that. And just working with small businesses. And then I would say the last one is mentorships because I just started it. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's, yeah, that's how I would rate them. Okay. And I will say... For, I mean, everyone listening to this is like, no, don't raise the price. However, when I saw the price of your Pinterest course, I was like, whoa, sign me up. Like that's way cheaper than I thought it was going to be. So it's a great value. And I Thank you. take it. But um, so with, I haven't dived too much into the course, but with Pinterest, would you say to someone, how much should they post their own content versus including someone else's content? Um, I always say 20% yours, 80% others. Okay. And it's, it's always, people are always like, what? I don't have to be posting a lot. Like I thought I was going to be over like with Instagram, you have to do, you know, on your feed, on your stories. Now there's reels and in IGTVs and you have to constantly be giving so much content. And then this content has a lifeline of 
72 hours max. And there's so much work. I just did my first reels. It took me like two hours. Mm -hmm. And you know, after today, no one's going to ever watch it again. Um, but with Pinterest, let's say that you have a client project or you have a new collection of products coming out. If you create 20 images and post them on Pinterest, those will live forever. <laughs> Mm -hmm. forever on Pinterest. As long as you have a good strategy with keywords and a description, it will always show up when people search for, you know, whatever it is you created, um, which is why it's so great. And I still have pins from 2014 that look awful that <laughs> drive traffic to my website and every year uh, around Valentine's Day, this um, collection of wallpapers I did around self-love go viral. And so I get a bunch of people. And those wallpapers I did in 2016. And every year, like clockwork, I see them everywhere. So I love it because you create you can do three projects, like one per month, and that's enough. Whereas with Instagram, it's kind of a hamster wheel, like every day, every day, every day. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. And I love to, like, I really love when I go and look at someone's Instagram account and they have a couple thousand followers and they're killing it. Like, so you're earning, you're pretty open about you earn six figures. Yes. And then you look at your Instagram account. And so many times people that I work with are like, but I need to have a lot of followers. I'm like, no, you don't, you know? So, you know, it's a mindset thing because for years I was obsessed with the number of followers that I had. I was like, I need at least that 10 K. How am I like, people are going to come to my account and not want to work with me because I don't have that number, but that hasn't been the case at all. It's just this like fear-based belief. Yep. Um, but it's true. There's like so many great entrepreneurs that, make more than six figures. I make seven figures that don't have that big of a following and that's okay. Um, it's just, we are led to believe that the more followers and engagement we have on Instagram, the more our income and it, it has no relation at all, yep. at all. There was actually this very popular, like 600 K like Jen, whatever Z person that launched a line of t-shirts, but she didn't, um, promote it. And so she didn't sell anything, even though she has like 600 K followers. And it was like this case study I saw on this website. I can't remember which one, but I was like, that kind of broke it for me and like just freed me. And I was like, yeah, you don't need that. No. Well, I, I see not so many, but I see people who have a lot of followers and they are not earning any money. And it's, I mean, really Instagram, they do a really good job making that gamification. You know, they want people to feel like it matters if you have followers. So you are on yeah. there. It's, it's Instagram's way of telling you that you matter, but it has no really correlation of your yeah. Um, so I'm curious what courses you've taken. Have you taken any courses or or not? I have. Um, I took Morgan Rapp's Design Biz Mastery, which is a course for designers to learn kind of value-based pricing and um, just kind of how to grow your business. So I took that um, right when the pandemic hit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And it was the most, uh, the most I've spent on a course or a mastermind. Um, and then afterwards I hired her as a mentor, which was the first time I did that. And, um, it's funny because there's a lot of, um, fear around investing in your business before you're ready. You're never going to be ready. Um, at this point in the pandemic, I had just gotten pregnant. I didn't know yet. Um, <laughs> and I invested in her course. And then right after I invested in her mentorship, and then we went into quarantine, then I found out I was pregnant and I didn't work for six months for six months of 2020. I did not work. I had no inquiries. I mean, everybody's business just was at a standstill for a while. And I still hit my first six figures in 2020 by working six months out of the year. 
Okay. And it was still like a mind blowing, you know, moment for me, but it happened um, because I invested in myself. Yeah. It's crazy what it can do for you. So I am like super passionate about this because I, I have seen when I buy a course, I mean, it's half of what you're learning in the course and half of just being surrounded by motivated individuals who elevate you to a different level, you know? Yeah. So I'm curious, um, with your mentorship, are you comfortable like chatting about cost price, what you're charging and what you plan to charge or do you not really? Yes. No, I, I, I I'm totally transparent. Um, I okay. feel like people should be a little bit more transparent if they're comfortable because then they, you know, younger designers or younger entrepreneurs can really get a grasp on things. And I wish I would have had someone, you know, to tell me don't charge $300 for a full website. <laughs> So like how much you charge now and how much do you see that? And I'm asking from my own standpoint, cause that's something I'm curious and intrigued to do, but I'm curious what. Yeah. So because I just started and I know how much my mentorship costs and I, I can't give away that information cause it's not mine, but it was a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I charged 1% of it almost like, um, I charged a thousand dollars for mm -hmm. my four girls. And it includes two zoom calls, one hour zoom calls, and then a 30 minute, uh, zoom call at the end of everything, just to recap and any last questions. Cause I do feel, um, that sometimes with mentorships, like they do the one hours and then there's no really, there's no follow-up. Yep. And I really wanted to provide a follow-up of like, how are you doing a month later? Mm -hmm. Um, and then obviously there's resources and a bunch of things that I give curated to each individual because not everybody is going through the same thing. So I either make them from scratch or I already have them because I have a lot of resources in my freebie hub. Um, and after this, I'm planning on getting some feedback of, you know, how they felt, um, what they would wish they would have gotten more of or less of or anything. And then I'm planning on, uh, relaunching it in maybe the five to six, uh, K range. Yeah. Okay. And then, oh, and I also include boxer, which is a really amazing app because it's like you can voice chat or text with anybody and it's not through your phone. So that's available with my girls throughout the two month mentorship. So they literally can text me whenever, <clears throat> and I'm just an open book. So if they're struggling or just have questions about anything, they just have me in their pocket. And I think that is what has so much value that they have, you know, a direct line to me, you know, business hours, but yeah. every day. So, okay. Does that ever get overwhelming? Are you like, uh, I'm actually checked out right now. Or so business hours, you said. Yeah. So it, it, it does come with, you know, you setting your own boundaries. So if I, ha I, I get a message, um, after five o'clock, um, on a Friday, I'm not, I'm going to answer it on Monday, even though I have the little notification on my phone and I have like OCD where I don't want it. I'm like boundaries, you know, cause I also have a, a baby. He's three months old. I can't always be available, but I do try to be during business hours. Mm -hmm. And to answer your other question, I would always cap my mentorships. Like every time I open it to four people, because I don't want to stretch myself too thin and I want to be able to give them the attention they need. And I feel like once you start adding more than four people, then maybe do a group thing. Mm -hmm. Um, cause oh, have you done a mastermind? Um, well, I think DBM is kind of like a mastermind. Um, because there is a course and you do have to go through the course, but then there's like a, a live kind of a Q and a where everybody is there and everybody's talking. Um, so kind of, but not really. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The mastermind thing intrigues me. I've, you know, anyhow, it intrigues me. I've read that. I'm more of a one-on-one -on -one person anyway. I yeah. feel like when there's more than again, maybe four people. I'm like, I don't know if I can give attention yeah. to more than four people in one zoom, you know, or then yeah. you're kind of talking to them, but the zoom call goes really, you know, three hours. Cause you can't really get to everybody. I can't imagine having like 12 people in here right now. Right. 
and really helping them, you know? With yeah. Them. So I, I think I would, I would always just stick to four because you have to, you have to think you also are doing, you know, your, your clients with your branding, or maybe you're working on another project for yourself or you're creating products or, you know, I have a baby. Yep. So, <laughs> yep. and I think you were similar that way that when you take on somebody you really want to give everything, you know, and I've yeah. heard that from Sylvia too, that you are just, let me help you. Let me help you. Yeah. And if, you know, so if you really want to make an impact that way, it's limited to what you, who, how many people you can help. And yeah. And you, yeah. you don't want to overdo it also because you're going to burn out. Like, mm-hmm. so while it's exciting, like it was so exciting to get all of those applications from people that wanted to be mentored. I'm like, okay, but in order for me to really help someone, I need to be able to, you know, have the time to give them what the attention they need, you know? Yeah, totally. So I guess in the notes, um, if you have like your most popular freebie, well, actually you can tell us what is, what is your most popular freebie that you offer? Um, a batch planner, actually. Oh, it's just a little planner sheet. It's, it's (laughs) the most popular, most downloaded one, but there was a time, I think it was a couple of years ago where I took, Oh, I took this other course, um, for email marketing, Mm -hmm. um, Jenna Kutcher's like, this was like five years ago. And she was talking about creating lead magnets and creating a couple. I created like 20. Awesome. Look at you. (laughs) But it got overwhelming because I had to keep track of all the blog posts everywhere where they were. And I was like, this is not helping. And I'm not even really targeting my people. I'm just doing everything under the sun. So I decided to just put everything in a hub and then just promote one or two that would really hit my market. Mm -hmm. And because all of these freebies that I created are around entrepreneur and wellness, because I'm a big wellness person, um, I just think they're helpful. So they're there. I have wellness, uh, workbooks, entrepreneur workbooks, a lot of different planner sheets, Mm -hmm. um, even a, a meal planner. I love it. And, um, (laughs) yeah, so there's a lot, but the batch planner is definitely the most popular one. And so, and I've even opted into one of your freebies and I don't even know this, but when I log in, is there like a library of all your freebies that you Mm -hmm. have? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's just the freebie hub and, um, you use the password and they're all there for you to download. Is it through Teachable? Is that where you host it? No, they're on my site. That's amazing. Oh yeah. God, I really like that. That's very cool. So what is it like to work for anthropology? Like I love anthropology. When I walk in, it's always super cool that I can't even imagine what that would be like. Um, you know, it's been a wild ride because when I first started, and I'm very uh, honest about this, when I first started working for them, I was only brought on to help out with projects. And that would be creating the post production of their products, which means I would get some die lines and I would make sure that it would print correctly. So I wasn't really doing much and it took a while for them to be like, Hey, do you want to do this illustration for this product? And I was like, yeah. (laughs) And, (laughs) and I think I remember, um, I did a line of wellness products with them. It was like a yoga mat, a crystal water bottle, um, like all of these things. And they used some patterns that I had designed. And I was like, Hey, can I put my name on it? And they were like, sure. Yeah. Um, actually write a bio and, uh, you can put it on the packaging. I was like, what? So they were super cool about it. Like I love my, my anthro client. She is the best. Um, she's really trusted me. I feel like I did have to earn her trust and, you know, I I kept pushing and pushing to get more things, which was terrifying, but, um, I've launched a couple of products with my signature on them um, for the past four years. Like every year there's one, if it could be little, it could be big. Um, There's actually going to be one more uh, collection. It's the biggest one I've ever done. It's a collection that's going to come out pretty soon. And it has my signature 
And it's pretty cool to have your signature on some packaging that's at Anthropology. Yeah, so um, what, what will it be on? I can't say because oh, I'm no. under and like a non-disclosure, but it's going to be really fun. Um, okay. And I always go into the stores and story um, me holding the products. I think there's like a highlight on my Instagram uh, okay. of me doing that. So if you want to look at that for past products, but it is an amazing experience to work with such a big company. Um, but I do have to say that I'm such a normal human, like that I have that fear where I'm like, well, this is the last year I'm probably going to work for them. You know, they're not going to come back and ask me to do another project. Um, but they always do, <laughs> but it's like, you know, you know, yes, it's very normal. It's well, very okay. normal. And I did want to ask too, um, what has the journey been like for your income? So how long have you been doing this on your own? everyone's is going to be different, but you know, you hear, Oh, I'm earning six figures. And people are like, sweet, I'm going to quit my job and earn six figures. But like, it takes time. You know, what was your yeah. experience? Well, um, I have been doing this since 2012, 2012. Um, when I started freelancing, I think I quit my job in 2014 and, um, I didn't really take my business seriously until around 2016, um, where I was like, okay, I really need to do this. I have to stop kind of playing around. I was traveling a lot too. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would fall into that trap of comparing myself to other people that I saw on Instagram kind of freelancing at the same time as me. And then they just skyrocketed and I felt, you know, but you can't compare your life to anybody else's. You just can't, it's so mean to yourself. <laughs> Um, but it, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, I started freelancing in 2012 and it wasn't until 2020 that I made six figures. Mm -hmm. Um, so it has been a journey, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of really high highs, really low lows. Um, but I, I really wouldn't trade it for anything. I love being able to work from home. Like I, I just talked about this recently where you forget sometimes when you started what you set out to do, cause you forget, you forget those goals or those dreams. And I was holding my son and we were watching a movie and I'm like, it's a Thursday. It's like 1 PM. And I'm just chilling with my son, like watching a Disney movie. I'm not at a nine to five. I'm not at a desk. I'm not answering to anybody. And I just, you know, I just made like 12 K with a client. Like yeah. what is life? Yep. I love those. So it's like, where you just yeah. back and you're like, Whoa. And you know, it feels like each day it feels like I'm, I'm assuming to you, but like, it's not really doing much, but then you have those moments where you're like, Oh, you do a little bit every day. And my goodness, like I've come a long way, you know? Yeah. yeah. Time. I really love what you said. And that comparison. Cause I also hear people like, well, we started at the same time and they're here and I'm here. Like they're progressing so much faster, but mm -hmm. that whole like go at your own pace, trust the process. It'll work. And I love that. Yeah. And it doesn't ever really go away. I'm going to say, I still fall into that trap. And mm -hmm. what I'd recently had to do is not follow a lot of designers. I don't follow a lot of designers and the ones that I do, I mute because even though I love them and I love them as a person, it's not personal, but I'm like, I don't want to be triggered. <laughs> So I mute them and that's okay because yep. you have to do whatever helps you feel amazing. You know? Okay. I've done the same thing and they're friends. Like I love yeah. them you know? yeah. and, and I genuinely am happy for their success. But when I get on Instagram and look and see their numbers or whatever, whatever it might be, I've had to mute them. And I'm like, be, I love you, but like, I love myself too. And I need to make yeah. sure that I feel good about my success. And yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. Well, this has been awesome. So I'll put a link to your freebie library, which is very <laughs> cool. And you open up your Pinterest course, what, like once a year, twice a year? Um, around twice a year. Yeah. Okay. It's open right now. I'm probably going to open it again in the fall. Okay. So fall and springtime ish. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming and chatting and sharing about your craft to career. 
Thank you for having me. It's been really fun. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Emmy, thank you so much for being on the Crafty Career Show. I hope that you enjoyed what Emmy shared. I know that I've applied a lot of what she's taught in her course. That's really helped up my Pinterest game. One thing I did want to touch on at the end of this episode, I invite a lot of different guests on this show who share what's working for them. And I remember at the beginning and a lot of my students say, goodness, it's just overwhelming. I don't know what to start with. I feel like I need to do it all. I need to have an email list. I need to be on social media. I need to have Pinterest. I need this and this and this. So while I'm sharing guests who come, you know, and talk about all of these different things, feel free, have that liberty to pick and choose what you want to work on now. Don't feel like you have to do it all right now. I mean, Emmy does a really good job of just embracing that Instagram isn't her thing and Pinterest is what she focuses on. And for you, it might be the other way around. Point is, I just want to share with you all the options that are out there so that you can do what works for you. So I hope that Emmy's information was helpful for you. And if Pinterest is the route that you want to go and you want to focus on, go for it. It is a powerful tool. And if it's not, if it's a, if you want to go a different route, that is okay too. So I just want to be here to empower you to move forward with your business in the way that you want to. And over time, you can add all the things if that's what you want to do, but don't feel overwhelmed by hearing these different options. So with that said, if you enjoyed this episode and you're enjoying the podcast as much as I am, please leave a review. You can tap to rate it and especially write a review. Let me know what's resonating with you. And if you leave your Instagram name or your name in your review, I'll be sure to give you a shout out and let people know where to find you. Be sure to tune in next week for the Craft to Career show. I will see you then.